I am very excited to introduce our first speaker for today's seminar session. Um, we're going to be hearing from uh, Dr. Neza Ben Abdallah, and she is currently in the lab, a postdoc in the lab of Anna Bonito at the DKFC. She did her master's studying the histone variant H3.3 in the lab of Jean-Viev Almuzny in the Curie Institute in Paris. And then she went to P Edinburgh, 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 sorry, um, to do her PhD in the lab of Wendy Bickmore. And she was able to um, develop some really cool uh, synthetic biology tools to study enhancer promoter and uh, communication. And then she did a, a a cool stint in Eileen Furlong's lab at Heidelberg and at EMBL working again on enhancers. And now she's kind of changing gears in her current postdoc in the Benito lab looking at cancer and histone modifications, which we'll hear about. But I also wanted to give a shout out because she has had some really cool, really fantastic fellowships. Uh, the first, the Christiane Nusslein Volhard Foundation Fellowship and a DKFC Fellowship, as well as other awards. So I think she's a fantastic uh, sci superstar scientist, and I'm very excited uh, to hear your seminar today. So thanks so much, and I will give you the floor. Thank you. Well, thank you very much for the introduction. So, uh, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to present my work. So um, today I'll talk to you about how h 2 vaccination plays a central role in synovial sarcoma. So first about uh, sarcoma. So there are a type of tumors that arise in the bone and the soft tissues, and they are frequent in the young population. So they represent roughly 13% of childhood cancers. Now, what is very striking about this type of cancer is that they have a very simple genetic background. So by that, I mean that they don't acquire a lot of mutations uh, like the other type of cancers. No, instead, they are often driven by one translocation event that often involves chromatin-associated uh, regulators. So in the case of synovial sarcoma, it's a fusion event between the chromosome 18 and the chromosome X, which creates this chimeric protein SS18, SSX. And to study this protein, we have synovial sarcoma cell lines, and you can see here the weird uh, chromosome 18 and X that is fused. So what we know so far is that SS18 is part of the mammalian Swysniff complex or the BAF complex, which is a chromatin remodeler and associated with gene activation. So it's a very well uh, characterized complex. And on the other hand, we don't really know a lot about SSX. So what we know is that it's normally only expressed in the testes and it has been linked with actually gene repression and uh, association perhaps with polychrome repressive complexes. So our previous work showed that SS18 and SSX can actually co-localize with KDM2B. So KDM2B is a protein that recognizes and binds unmethylated CPG island. And then it recruits this non-canonical polychrome repressive complex one, so PRC 1.1, which then uh, ubiquitinates histone H2A on the lysine 119. And this leads to gene repression. So now in synovial sarcoma, what you have is that SS18 and SSX co occupy the sites and then brings the Swysniff complex. And that leads to the aberrant upregulation of those PRC1.1 sites. So, what's still uh, what we don't know is the, actually the molecular mechanisms that govern this SS18 SSX localization. So, first, um, to dissect that a bit more, we wanted to see in the SS18 SSX protein what are the key domains that are responsible for this localization. So we first did a CRISPR tiling sgRNA screen to identify hypersensitive regions. And what you can observe here is that in the SSX tail, so actually the SSX RD domain here is, has a drastic effect on cell viability. So this shows that the RD domain is actually the most crucial domain of the fusion. So we next uh, generated EGFP fused uh, constructs to investigate a bit more the RD. And so what we have is SS18, SS18, SSX, and then either the SSX, the SSX RD domain alone, or the SSX lacking this RD domain. And what you can see here in this mitotic life cell imaging snapshot is that the RD uh, alone can bind chromatin. And this is independent of the presence of SS18. So this shows that the SSX RD controls uh, SS18, SSX chromatin binding. Uh, interestingly, by doing the same actually with KDM2B, PCGF1, and Ring1B, which are PRC1.1 uh, proteins, we could see that they don't seem to have actually the same 
uh, affinity for the chromatin. So this shows that actually that the SSXRD could bind chromatin in another way than just a protein-protein interaction with the PRC1.1 complex. So to uh, check this in more details, we did a mass spectrometry on SSXRD interactome. And what you can see here is a really strong affinity for actually histone and histone H2A and its variants macro H2A1 and macro H2A2. So when we saw this histone H2A, we immediately thought of histone H2A butination because this is the mark deposited by PRC1.1. So to test if there is a direct interaction between SSX and histone H2A butination, we did nanobreds, which is a protein-protein interaction assay, which relies on the energy transfer between the two proteins. So it's a bit like FRET. And in one hand, we have our SSX construct. So we have SSX and two uh, mutants of the RD domain. And the other hand, we have our histones. So we first tested histone uh, H2A, so the wild type histone. And you can see that there is an interaction with SSX. However, when you mutate the RD domain, you have a decrease of interaction. Now, what is even more interesting is when you mutate H2A, so this is a residue that can no longer be ubiquitinated, you see that there is a decrease now in the interaction between SSX and H2A. So this shows that SSX actually prefers to interact with histones H2A that are ubiquitinated. We then did also the same with the histone variant, macro H2A1 and macro H2A2, and you can see that for both of those histone variants, you also have an interaction with SSX. So we then wanted to see what happens genome-wide. So we did a cut and run profiling. And you can see that uh, looking at h 2 nation and macro H2A2, there is a nice colocalization uh, with SS18 and SSX globally. So, so far, what we show is that SS18 and SSX co-occupies PRC1.1 uh, sites. And this is due to the RD domain of SSX, so the tail of SSX, which likes to bind h 2 nation and macro H2A rich environments. But uh, those environments are quite complex. So I said, there is PRC1.1, but actually there are other variants of PRC1. And there is also PRC2, which deposits H3K273 methyl. And actually so far, macro H2A has been more linked with PRC2 than PRC1. So our next question is, what is the main um, complex that actually deposits or creates this environment that SS18 and SSX um, likes? So H2A nation and macro H2A. Is it PRC1 or is it PRC2? So to answer this question, we did the artificial chromatin targeting assay. So this is the MBG assay, which has been designed by the Brock Dorf lab. And this, is, this assay, you have KGM2B that now you fuse to the MBD peptide. So this stands for methyl binding domain. And this rewires KGM2B to methylated CPGs. And you have a V5 tag, so you can use microscopy as a readout. And you can see here in the KDM2B um, conditions, you have those big uh, foci, which are the MBD constructs. And you can see this specific recruitment of B-core and h 2 nation, which does not happen in our negative control, luciferase, where the MBD foci do not recruit any of these. So this is the quantification here. So we first made sure that this rewired KDM2B can, uh, where can recruit a complete PRC1.1 and also an active PRC1 because there is deposition of h 2 nation. So our next question is, can it recruit SS18 and SSX? And it can. So you can see in the V5 foci, this accumulation of SS18 and SSX. And then we played with the systems. So we first remove uh, PRC1.1 components. So we remove B-Core and PCGF1. And we saw that that has an effect on SS18 and SSX recruitment. And we did the same then with PRC2. We removed EED or EZH2. And this, however, had no effect on SS18 and SSX recruitment. So this shows that the PRC1.1 recruitment of SS18 can be done independently of PRC2. And accordingly, we do not have H3K273 methyl accumulation in those MBD candidate to be for site. So we next, next check can it recruit macro H2A? And it can. So we show here that uh, MBD cadm 2 b can deposit macro H2A1, but we also see that it's the same for macro H2A2. However, when you remove macro H2A, there is no effect on SS18 and SSX recruitment. So this shows that PRC1 actually recruits SS18 and SSX also independently of macro H2A. However, what is very interesting is that when you remove PCGF1, so member of PRC1.1, you have, as expected, a decrease of h recognition and deposition. As I just showed, also, there is a decrease of SS18 and SSX. And what you can also see is that it has an effect on macro H2A1 deposition. So it seems that this uh, presence of macro H2A have occurs downstream of H2A ubiquitination uh, deposition. 
So all in all, to, it shows that PRC 1.1 is actually required to create this chromatin environment that s 18 ssx likes, which is H2A ignition and macro H2A. So we wanted to see next, does it happen globally? So we did cut and run profiling on um, those SGPCGF1. So this is a knockout of PCGF1, which is a member of PRC 1.1. And you can see that removing PRC1 has actually a global effect on h 2 ignition levels. So it leads to a reduction of h 2 ignition. And this has then an effect on SS18 SSX chromatin occupancy. You see that it's really, really gone. So this shows that, yeah, the complex PRC1.1 actually even globally governs h 2 ignition levels and then the deposition of SS18 SSX uh, on the chromatin. So this is now an updated picture. Uh, we know that s 18 sx bind chromatin. So actually what we show is that macro H2A seems to not, um, uh, is not required for the de novo recruitment on the chromatin. It's actually mainly h 2 kination. And this mark is globally deposited by PRC 1.1. Now, what is qu uh, quite interesting is uh, in the patients that have Sanovia sarcoma, uh, a few of them uh, seems to display an increase of b -core. So. Uh, we thought that maybe there is an interplay between PRC 1.1 and SS18 SSX. So to test that, we looked at published RNA-seq data. And in this assay, you can see that uh, they overexpressed SS18 SSX in naive cells. And this leads to an upregulation of the B core gene uh, expression and reciprocally. In those two synovia sarcoma cell line, when you remove SS18 SSX, this leads to a, a down regulation of the B core gene. So it, it shows that SS18 SSX actually controls uh, the B core expression. And we think this is the case because B core is a direct target of SS18 SSX. But this has a consequence. If you overexpress SS18 SSX, then you have a corresponding increase of H3 ignition levels. So now what we observed um, when we did Westerns to check uh, the protein levels. We saw that upon SS18 SSX overexpression, you have an increase of B core, which is uh, normal because we have this increase of expression. But we also see that is the case for PCGF1, another member of PRC1. However, PRC1, uh, PCGF1 is not upregulated. So it shows that somehow SS18 SSX manages to increase the protein level without touching at the transcription. So there is another way how it does it. So we thought about SSX because we know that SSX is not a transcriptional activator. And perhaps SSX has the ability of increasing the, um, the protein levels by perhaps uh, increasing the protein stability or the complex stability on the chromatin. So to test that, we did a salt extraction assay. So this is a way to monitor chromatin protein interaction. So we do a series of washes and uh, you can see if the protein is more soluble or more associated with the protein. And this is the case of B-Core. And you can see that when we overexpress SSX, the B-Core levels in this uh, soluble fraction are drastically decreased. So this shows that SSX actually increases B-Core stability. And this has, again, a consequence on h 2 And this is quite striking. When you overexpress SSX, so really the tail alone, you can see a very nice corresponding increase of h 2 levels. And this does not occur when you have the uh, Delta RD uh, version. So if you increase h 2 levels, you then increase SS18 SSX levels. So it shows that when you have only the tail, so SSX overexpression, you then overexpress um, um, increase the levels of SS18, SSX chromatin occupancy. So this shows that actually there is a feedback loop between SS18 and h 3 vaccination where they reinforce each other. And to finish, we can see that very nicely during mouse uh, synovial sarcoma tumorogenesis. So this is a mouse model where you induce SS18, SS, SSX, and you have the beginning of a tumor uh, in the tongue. And you can see these uh, tumor cells next to uh, normal muscle cells. And what you can see is that in the normal muscle cells, they display a normal level of h 2 vaccination. However, in the adjacent, adjacent SS18, SSX cells, you have a very drastic increase of the h 2 vaccination levels. So this shows that this feedback loop between SS18 and h 2 vaccination occurs throughout uh, synovial sarcoma tumorogenesis. Right, so to summarize what I've shown you today, so we first showed that the SSX RD, so the tail of SSX, actually mediates the binding of SS18 SSX onto the chromatin, uh, specifically at regions that are marked with H2V and macro H2A. 
now the complex that uh, is important for HIV vaccination globally seems to be PRC 1.1. And lastly, what we show is that there is a feedback loop between SS18 and SSX and HIV vaccination, where SS18 and SSX further promotes the levels of HIV vaccination via two different mechanisms. So first, via the SS18 and SSX that controls the expression of uh, PRC 1.1 members. And secondly, by the SSX tail that seems to mediate the chromatin occupancy to the protein stability of the PRC 1.1 complex, which then leads to an increase of H reductionation. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank the people involved in this uh, work. So first, uh, Anna Benito, and then the rest of the lab for being such a dynamic and great team to work with. And then in bold are the people that particularly participated in that work. And our collaborators, so Michael Underhill and Wilder Scott, which established actually this uh, mouse model and performed the HUA uh, vaccination stainings. The rest of our collaborators and the facilities, and lastly, the funding for supporting our work. And thank you all for your attention and joining this meeting today. That was great. Thank you so much. Um, before I ask my questions, I just wanted to um, remind everyone that if you'd like to ask a question, you can raise your hand and I'll call on you or allow you to speak, or you can write it in the Q&A box and I'll read it up um, uh, to ask. <laughs> but I had a couple of questions about this fusion switch sniff complex. So like I'm a little bit like not as well versed on the cancer side of the literature. So I was curious. So if I remember correctly, this fusion form of switch sniff lacks the human sniff five domain. Is that right? Or you might yes. have said, sorry if I missed it. No, it's very good knowledge. <laughs> so is there um, a difference in its chromatin remodeling activity? Like how does it function um, as a remodeler? And then I'm going to ask another question related to that. <laughs> and unless so it seems a question. <laughs> It seems that uh, what we're showing here is actually the, um, uh, so the swi sniff complex is here only to really uh, upregulate the genes. Uh, so there is this idea that there was a loss of function for the swi sniff complex, but it seems that it's actually not the mechanism that drives the cancer. And actually what has been recently described is other fusions that involve SSX. Mm -hmm. So there is the EWSR1 SSX and MN1 SSX, and those two proteins do not involve uh, the swi sniff complex at all. So so we really think that this is not due to a uh, loss of function, but it's just really bringing an activator onto those uh, PRC 1.1 sites through does the it, SSS. Does it move the nucleosome, like slide it at all? When it uh, that, I don't know. Okay. Uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> I was curious about that because then I was wondering if there was more of this mutant form of the switch sniff complex binding to his H2A119 ubiquitin, is there something where like DNA repair is abrogated? Like, cause I think that mark is supposed to be involved in DNA repair. So I was just curious yeah. if the increase in DNA repair, DNA damage defect uh, or something. We don't see, so I, I did look at, because of the histone variants that were so like, there is also uh, H2AZ and H2AX, which were present. And we look, I looked at uh, H2AX, a gamma H2AX, and there was no uh, increase, there is no strong DNA damage. Uh, presence. And actually, I think we can see that by the fact there is not a strong mutational burden in synovial sarcoma. Oh, so okay. the repair machinery seems Still to be okay-ish. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, great. So um, we do have some other questions. So we have one from Gerard Brien. Um, this question is, synovial sarcoma cells have been shown to rely on the function of PCGF3. Have you examined the role of PCGF3 containing PRC1 complexes and ubiquitination mediated by PCGF3 in your model system? That's an excellent question. So yeah, I mean, there, there are different variants of PRC1. And actually, this is a whole project. So this is a project of Vinny Dalal, who's a PhD student in the lab. And he looked at um, all the, the effect of all the uh, PCGFs. And uh, we know that it's only PCGF1 and PCGF3 that have uh, an effect. And um, it seems that the role, like the fact that PGF3 is a dependency is not linked to the fact that it recruits SS18, SSX genome-wide. So it's not the ability of depositing um, uh, HIV recognition genome-wide, it's something else. And uh, hopefully uh, Vinit will be able to present this work at some point, maybe here. <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, we have another one from Rodrigo Villasenor. 
a uh, great talk. Macro H2A can bind to ADB, AT, ADP, <laughs> ribosylation. Yeah. Words are hard. Um, do you also see increased ADP ribosylation at the SS18 SSX binding sites in synovial sarcoma? Thanks. <laughs> so, yeah, um, I haven't checked that. Uh, but what? so I did look at the two isoform of micro H2A1, so also 1.2, which doesn't have the ADP uh, uh, binding domain. And also there is a micro H2A2. So, I don't think it's linked with this uh, capability of binding uh, ADP ribos, but perhaps something else. But the, also the short answer is I haven't checked that in particular. Yeah, it's interesting. I didn't know that about macro H2A. And then we have another question from Anir Bond, Dasgupta. Uh, nice presentation, I agree. Uh, have you seen any oncogenic cue of switch sniff activity in, in case of loss of PRC2 mediated H3 K27 methylation? Uh, sorry, I, did, I, uh, I got oh, lost sorry. in the question. Oh, yeah. So, <laughs> Can you repeat uh, it? Yeah. So, have you seen any oncogenic? oncogenic cue of switch sniff activity in case of loss of PRC2 mediated H3K27 methylation. So I, I'm not sure I understand the question, so I think I'm going to maybe answer a bit uh, uh, not uh, on to the point, uh, but so I think there is a loss of, uh, indeed, there is a decrease of H3K27 3-methyl, which is due to the increase of acetyl on the K27 because of sway sniff. And um, I'm not sure I understand of the oncogenic Q part of the question. So uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I... Oh, that's okay. I mean, if you want to clarify in there, Bon, you can uh, raise your hand or um, maybe I can speculate, which is perhaps in the cancers. Oh, okay. He's going to raise his hand. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Hello. Uh, am I hey, Yeah. Yeah, I just, I just was, uh, I was wondering that uh, since K27 uh, acid methylation is kind of uh, uh, connected to PRC1 mediated uh, H2A ubiquitination. So I was wondering if it had presented any sort of uh, the oncogenicity is getting increased or decreased in case of uh, this swine activity. Um, so I think the, the, the oncogenic transformation is really due to the fact that sway sniff is there. So it's the activator that really um, now uh, so activates the gene. So there is H3 K27 acetyl. Now um, the role of uh, PRC2 media. So the, the fact that H3 K27 um, are, um, levels are decreased alone, I don't think we can really uh, dissect this like because it's all really linked. Mm -hmm. uh, but what seems um, what seems to be clear is also the H3 ignition levels are quite high, so which is also counterintuitive because it's a uh, mark linked with um, repression. But I think in that case it's really um, uh, linked with recruiting SHN6. But what I'd like to um, so this is a huge. Uh, uh, a, a guess, so it's not, uh, I haven't done any work, but I think, so I'm not sure that the fact that PRC 1.1 can recruit macro H2A is something universal, so it could be something just in uh, synovial sarcoma. And I'm wondering here if macro H2A maybe has a role of a bit compensating with this loss of h 3 k 27 3 methyl so, uh, because it's not it's not important for the the recruitment of a synthetic sex, but maybe it has a role uh, for the maintenance of the mark, because we know that h 3 is very dynamic, Whereas macroage 2 a is more uh, on the long run uh, an epigenetic mark. So, but that's uh, a, a really big guess. I'm, we haven't done much work on that. So we should really move on, but that was fantastic. Thank you so much. Um, and if you have more questions, feel free to write them in the Q&A box or um, contact uh, Neza. Um, are you in the Discord? We might be able to ask. I you. am, yeah. Oh, I am. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, feel free to um, keep chatting about this really crazy, cool mutant switch sniff there. Um, <laughs> so much, and I'll see you all later.